Hey awesome people YouTube welcome back to another Bangalore video in this one we'll be talking about endurance skills which is writing athletics and smithing but before getting to it I just want to remind that if we can get to 575 subscribers by the by Christmas I'll be doing $25 gift card giveaway and I do shim and cake link is down in the description and I do have my own discord link down in the description as well and uh yeah we do have channel membership do check it out but with all that said let's get back into the video we have first skill uh, line we're going to go is writing. The higher your writing is, the more maximum difficulty you can ride, which means better horses, more uh, noble horses you can ride. It also increases your horse speed, horse maneuverability, mounted weapon damage penalty would uh, be less, mounted weapon speed and uh, mounted weapon speed reload penalty uh, will be better, and mount dismount, uh, dismount resistance and the max HP point. Right. So at level 25, you have Nimble Steed, which gives you plus 10 maneuver, uh, maneuvering. And if we have Captain, plus 30 riding skill to troops in your formation. And you have full speed, plus 20% char, uh, charge damage dealt. And for Captain, plus 10% charge damage dealt by troops in your formation. So personally, I usually take Nimble Steed just because it allows me more maneuverability, just so I can little uh, a little more stuff for captain um if you take nimble steed also because charge is once yes it's really good more damage but after that you know it's not as good you can take uh full speed if you just charge in do the charge damage you know and then back away if you're just primarily doing that full speed is better otherwise i personally prefer nimble steed at level 50, you have Veterinary, which gives you plus 20 hit points to your mount, and for part of the plus 10 hit points amounts of troops in your formation. And then while strapped, which is minus 50% chance of your mount dying or becoming lame after its fall in the battle, and Governor, plus, zero, uh, plus 0 0.5 daily loyalty to governed settlements. Captain, there is no perk, so it doesn't matter. Governor, while strapped. Personally, I would take Veterinary more hit points to your mount and for the mounts of your troops is pretty good so it stays alive a little longer at 75 you have deep deeper sacks plus 20 carry capacity to pack animals and for party leader minus 10 percent trade penalty for mounts and nomadic traditions which gives you plus 30 percent party speed bonus for mounted food troops and for captain plus 10 de uh, percent damage bonus from speed to troops in your formation if you have uh, Foot trips primarily like a good amount. Nomadic traditions will help you just so you can get more movement speed. Otherwise, I personally use deeper sacks just so you know more carry capacity to pack animals. So I don't have to uh, like stop and sell as much, right? Um, that minus ten percent trade penalty for mounts is not bad for captain. Oh, I only take nomadic traditions because that's the only captain perk we have in here. I love one hundred. You have Sagittarius, which is minus 15% accuracy penalty while mounted for yourself, and for Captain, minus 15% accuracy penalty to mount the troops in your party. And then you have Super Wins, plus 5% top speed to your mount, and for party leader, plus 2% party speed. Personally, I will take Swooping Win for myself because I'm usually the party leader, so it gives me more movement speed to my mount, and the party speed 2% is pretty good. And for Captain, if I have horse archers, definitely take Sagittarius because minus 15% accuracy penalty to mount the troops in your party is really nice. So your horse archers can hit your Kuzei Congard, Kuzei Nobosan, or Imperial Bus Busalari, whatever you use. Now at level 125, you have Relief Force, plus 10% uh, plus 10 starting battle morale when you join and don't go in battle with your allies. And for governor, it's plus 20 security provided by mounted troops in governed settlements. That's the only one you can take, so obviously take that. At 150, you have Horse Archer, plus 10% range damage while mounted, and for Captain, plus 5% damage by mounted archers in your party. Or Mounted Warrior, plus 5 mounted melee damage for yourself, and for Captain, plus 5 mounted uh, melee damage by troops in your formation. So this one is pretty simple. If you are Horse Archers, you take Horse Archer perk, because that's all only for horse archers. If you're mainly just regular melee cavalry, you take Mounted Warrior, right? Same thing for the captain parts. Now at 175, you have Breeder, 
which is probability plus one daily chance of animals in your party reproducing and governing plus five production rate to the villages bound to the governed settlement. Or sheep herder, sheep, sheep herd. For probability is minus 50% speed penalty from herding and governor plus 15 chance of producing tier two plus horses in villages bound to uh, govern settlement. Honestly, for governor, I'll probably take villagers, captain none, and for yourself, just for that breeding, just so you have a little more chance of getting more animals. Now at 200, you have Annoying Buzz, which is for yourself, gives you plus 20 battle morale penalty to enemies who are, uh, with mounted range kills, and for Captain, it gives plus 5 battle morale penalty to enemies with mounted range kills by troops in your formation. Or you have Thunderous Charge, which is plus 20 battle morale penalty to enemies with mounted melee kills, and for Captain, it's plus 10% battle morale penalty to enemies with mounted kills by troops in your formation. This is, you know, again, same with the previous couple of, uh, one before, if you use mount uh, cavalry who is melee, you take thunderous charge. If you use horse archers, you take annoying buzz. Now at 225, you have cavalry tactics, which is plus 30% volunteering rate of cavalry troops in your governed settlements by your clan. For governor, it's minus 50% wages of mounted troops in governed settlement. Or you have mounted patrols, which is minus 50% chance of uh, escape chance to. Sorry. Let me read it again. Mata Pachos, minus 50% chance escape chance uh, in your, uh, to prisoners in your party. And for governor, it is minus 50% escape chance to prisoners in government settlements. Personally, I would take Mata Pachos, so less chance to escape if you combine that with one uh, perk from scouting, which is. Right there. Keen sight. Um, you will literally make it to where enemy lords will not be able to escape, right? But that 50% chance is also pretty well. You know, Captain, there is nothing for Governor. Um, Cavalry Tactics is not great because I tried to keep no mounted troops in there, so... But the Pachos will also not be bad for Governor. Now at 250, you have Dauntless Steed, which is plus 50% resistance to getting staggered while mounted. And for Captain, it's plus 5 armor to mount the troops in your formation. Or Tough Steed. It gives you personally plus 20% armor to your mount. And for Captain, plus 10 armor to mount uh, to mount of troops in your formation. Honestly, personally, I take Tough Steed, so it's more armored. And for my uh, Captain, I should take Tough Steed as well. So my uh, mounts are also as well uh, decently protected especially if they are against like spearmen or pikemen right? and for 275 you have the way of the saddle which gives you plus one charge damage and maneuvering for every uh, 10 skill points above 200 it's not bad so you can do more charge damage right? now let's talk about uh, the best way to level up your running is well to damage while on a horse, be it bow damage, crossbow damage, javelin damage, one-handed, two-handed, pull them, doesn't matter. And also uh, using a horse while on a map to traverse, also help you. you know, the easiest way to see how it can help you is that plus sign, you know, riding on the map with much, uh, with as much speed as possible and fighting on horseback gaining speed bonus will help you. And you can just press the plus sign and it will tell you. Now, athletics. Athletics is doing combat on foot. The easiest way to level is fight on foot, move on map on foot, right? And the higher the level is, it will increase your running speed, weight penalty reduction, knockback resistance, and knockback, resi uh, knockback resistance also. Knockback resistance and knockdown, sorry. So, athletics at 25, you have morning exercise, which gives you plus three combat movement speed and for captain plus five combat movement speed to troops in your formation and well built which gives you plus five hit points and for party uh leader plus five hit points to foot troops in your form uh in your party personally i take five hit points just so my uh, troops are more healthy and for captain i take money exercise just so my troops move faster right now at 50, I have form fitting armor, which personally gives you minus 15 armor weight, and for captain, plus 4 combat movement speed to tier 3 plus troops uh, in your formation, foot troops. Or fury, 
version that gives you plus 10% weapon handling while on foot, and for captain, plus 10 weapon handling to foot troops and information. Personally, I take form fitting armor because less armor weight allows me to move faster because I usually have my guy have wear pretty heavy armor just so he can survive and lead the battle. Captain will take theory just so they get more weapon handling. 75, you have imposing stature, which gives you plus 30% persuasion chance and for party leader plus 5 party size. Or stamina, plus 30% crafting stamina rate and party leader plus 5 prisoner limit and minus 10% chance to your prisoners, uh, percent escape chance to your prisoners. Captain, nothing good. Personally, I'll take imposing stat, uh, stature. Persuasion skill is not, the, is not great, but that 5 party size limit is also pretty nice. That's why I take it. At 100, you have Powerful, which is plus 4% damage with melee weapons, and Captain is plus 2% melee damage by troops in your formation. Or Sprint, which is plus 5 combat movement speed while you have no shield and no ranged weapons equipped. And for Captain, it's plus 3 combat movement speed to, uh, speed to your infantry troops in formation. Personally, I would take Powerful for my damage. Captain, if he is... Uh, in charge of like a shield wall, I would take him powerful so they more damage. If the, he's in charge of shock troops, I would take him sprint so they can move faster since they are a bit lightly armored. At 125, I'll brace, which is minus 30% chance charge damage taken, and captain minus 30% uh, charge damage taken by troops in your formation, or surging blow, which is uh, plus 30% damage bonus from speed while on foot for captain plus 30 percent damage bonus from speed to troops in your formation personally i would take braced if i'm on foot just so i take less charge damage and for captain as well right just because if the enemy utilizes a lot of horses just getting that less damage from charge is not bad now at 150 you have good day rest plus 10 percent hit point regeneration while winning the sediment and plus 10 daily percent uh, plus they plus 10 daily experience to foot troops while winning in settlements or walk it off which is gives you plus 10 percent hit point regeneration while traveling and plus three daily experience to foot troops while traveling i usually take walk it off because i move around on the map more just so i can get to places or get away from enemies stuff like that so i usually take walk it off if you do primarily want to wait in settlements for that stuff take good day rest but i'll prefer walk it off now at 175, you have Durable, which gives you plus one endurance attribute, and for governor, plus one daily loyalty in governed settlements. Or Energetic, which is plus 20% overburden speed penalty, and for governor, plus 20% uh, hard growth in villages bound to governed settlements. For governor, plus one daily loyalty is nice. Unless you're the king and have max uh, loyalty, then I would take uh, plus 20% hard growth to vill uh, in villages bound to governed settlements. Personally, I would take durable just for that one percent, or just for that one more endurance attribute, because endurance is uh, is a big attribute, and you get attributes every four levels. So if I don't have to spend that point in uh, endurance, I can put it somewhere else. Now at two hundred, you have steady, which gives you plus one control attribute, and for governor, it gives you plus ten percent production farms, mines, lumber camps, and clay pits bound to govern settlements. Or you have strong, which is plus one vigor attribute and for party leader it's plus five party speed by uh foot troops in your party that governor obviously takes steady which is not always great and for other one for yourself it depends what you want do you want to put a point in vigor or do you want to put on control right if you want control you take steady if you want vigor you take strong at 225 you have strong arms which is plus five percent damage with strong weapons and for captain plus 20 uh, plus 20 throwing skill to troops in information or strong legs which is minus 50 percent fall damage taken and plus 100 kick uh, damage dealt and for governor minus 20 percent food consumption in governed settlements while under siege personally i take strong legs because i do fall off in siege towers or in sieges from the wall or I get just pushed and uh this will take uh, and that makes me take a lot of damage. So with this, I take a lot less damage. If you are utilizing throwing uh, infantry, you know, like javelin throwers and stuff like that, for captain, I would take this strong arms just for their more throwing skills to troops and information. 
right? A 250F ignore pain, which is plus 10% armor while on foot, and for captains, plus 5 arm, uh, percent armor to foot troops in information. Or Spartan, which is plus 50% resistance to getting staggered while on foot. Body leader is minus 20% food consumption in your body. Personally, and for captain, I'll take ignore pain. More armor is always nice. Now, at 275, you get Mighty Blow. You stun your enemies longer after they block, block your attack. And you get plus one hit point for every skill point above 250. So once you get it, you get 25 more hit points. Because it gets uh, 275. Right? And again, you just run around the map on foot. And fight combat on foot. Now, let's talk about smithing. Smithing is the higher you have it, the more max difficulty your weapon that can be smithed without penalty increases. And you uh, get better at it by smithing weapons, refining materials, and uh, smithing down old weapons. You know, create weapons, refine the materials, and break down the old weapons. Right? At 25, you get efficient charcoal maker, which gives you you can use more efficient method of charcoal production that it produces three units of charcoal from two units of hardwood. Or efficient iron maker, you can produce crude iron more efficiently by obtaining three units of crude iron from one unit of iron ore. Personally, I would take efficient charcoal maker. Instead of one charcoal from two hardwood, you get three. Definitely more preferred. At 50, you get Curious Smelter, which is plus 100% learning rate of new parts designed when smelting. Or Steel Maker. You can refine two units of iron into one unit of steel and one unit of crude iron as by product. Personally, I take Curious Smelter because I want to learn more designs faster. So I can get my weapon smith or start making money through smithing faster. So I take Curious Smelter. At 75, you have Curious Smith, which is plus 100% learning rate on new parts design when smithing. Or Steel Maker 2, you can refine two units of steel into one unit of fine steel and one unit of crude iron as byproduct. Again, I take Curious Smith. Learning grade of new parts design on smithing is huge. Again, more parts I learn faster. Right, and you can break down some of the weapons that you can get fine steel, uh, stuff like that. Right? At 100, you have Experience Smith. You have plus 10% 10, plus 10 chance of creating fine weapons. And for per and other one is successful crafting order of notables increase the relations by two with them or steel maker three you can find two units of fine steel into one unit of masking steel and one unit of crowd crude iron as byproduct and plus four relations with lords and ladies for successfully crafting our orders first now i take experience smith because fine weapons when you do make it is a lot better than other ones because it gets more stats Right, the the successful crafting orders is not as huge because I usually don't do it for that reason, and I don't usually use the mask and steel as much because well, I don't find those weapons as effective as the other ones that I can make. They're just a little too more expensive. Now at 125, you have practical refiner, which is minus 50% stamina spent while refining, or practical sm smelter, minus 50% stamina spent while smelting. This one. It depends on you. If you do a lot of refining, take practical refiner. If you do a lot of smelting, take practical smelter. Right. At 150, you have control smith, which gives you plus one control attribute, or you have vigorous smith, which gives you plus one vigor attribute. This one, it's up to you. If you need more vigor points, attribute points, take vigorous smith. If you need more control, take control smith. Now at 175, you have artisan smelter, which is minus 50% trade penalty when selling smith weapons or practical uh, smith which is minus 50 percent uh minus 50 percent stamina spent while smithing i usually take artisan smith because minus 50 percent trade pencil and selling smith weapons is huge i was to make more money selling those weapons at 200 you have master smith which is 10 percent chance of creating master work weapons that's the only one you can take and master work weapons are even better than fine weapons which gives you more attributes to those weapons like better handling more damage more swing speed stuff like that more thrust damage if you uh if you have those now 225 you have enduring smith which gives you plus one endurance attribute or fencer smith which is plus one focus point to one-handed and two-hand personally i take enduring smith you just don't have to put endurance as much because the focus points are not bad but i get them every level versus an attribute point which i get every four levels now at 250, I have Sharpened Edge, 
which gives you plus two percent damage to uh plus two percent swing damage to crafted weapons or sharpen tip which gives you plus two percent thrust damage of crafted weapons so if you primarily use uh smith weapons that are thrust damage you take sharp tip if you do more uh, craft weapons that are more swing you know like glaive more uh sword that doesn't thrust just swings you take sharper edge and at 275 you have legendary smith which gives you plus five percent chance of creating legendary weapons chance increases by one percent every skill point above 300 right so it's pretty good because legendary weapons are even better they're like awesome right but it's only five percent chance if you and if you can get above 300 if you get like 10 uh 10 endurance and five focus you can get to 330 uh skill points which will give you 35 percent chance of creating it which is pretty good but you have to specialize into smithing right but smithing is definitely worth getting at least a little bit if you want to make money but with all that said that's the skills of you of writing athletics and smithing if you did enjoy this video do leave a like comment subscribe and if you want to see other videos do let me know down in the comments with all that said don't forget to stay awesome i'll see you in the next one and bye bye